<laughs> we are uh, we're getting, coming up on the fourth Sunday of Easter, so that's what we're studying today. If you can see this, um, be the next Sunday. Often, um, this fourth Sunday of Easter is the Good Shepherd Sunday, and we read through different sections of John chapter ten, and the, John chapter ten part of the is the verses for even show up in our intro it today. And then Psalm 78 and 79, not just, not just Psalm 23, but uh, it, we noticed we, the Lord um, compares himself or calls himself a shepherd you know, throughout the Old Testament, not just Jesus, but that's another way that Jesus connects himself to the same God of the Old Testament. So the intro it, I am the good shepherd. I know, I know my own, and my, my own, own know me, and I lay down, down my life for the, the sheep. sheep. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. From, from following the nursing ewes, he brought him to shepherd, shepherd Jacob, his, his people, people Israel, Israel, is his inheritance. inheritance. With upright heart he shepherded them, and guided and them with his skillful hand. hand. But we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. We pray. I call it Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, short section out of John chapter 10, and we, uh, so we've, uh, in other years past, when we read Matthew and Mark, we <clears throat> read two sections before the, leading up to this, and then, uh, and then this year, so we start at verse 22, John 10, 22. To 30 and they're all short verses fairly short verses too so um, so okay 30 verse 22 go one verse at a time Ray at that time the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem it was winter yeah the feast of dedication and now uh, this w was not an Old Testament feast in the same way that Passover and um, and uh, tabernacles and weeks or Pentecost. Um, the Feast of Dedication w is what we t today we call Hanukkah. Hanukkah, yeah. During the in between the Testaments, or if you have the Apocrypha and you read Maccabees about when the Greeks. We were were attacking the is the Israelites or oppressing the Israelites and the Maccabees revolted and were fighting. The temple was you know so um, they ha were tr they were rededicating the temple. They only had oil should have been enough for one day, but it lasted for seven days until they could bless enough and create you know, make mix and bless enough oil to um, to continue. Hanukkah. So Hanukkah is a little bit of an, a different holiday, uh, but we know Hanukkah falls in December, the winter, uh, close to when we celebrate Christmas. Um, so winter oh, in Jerusalem, probably not snowy, but cool, cooler. Um, okay, so 23. Linda. And, and Jesus was walking in the temple 
in the colonnade of Solomon. No, uh, are you on the right one? Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, okay. yeah. Go ahead. Um, so in the temple colonnade, so you have columns. It's a bit of a sheltered area, but open, kind of a kind of a covered patio. So we might you know, or something. Um, not as common in our area, but. If you live down, you know, in a warmer air climate, you might have more kind of covered outdoor space. Uh, so the temple had this section, um, and, and um, they might have had some heating fires burning or something. You know, something to you know, people would gather around, something to keep a little warm. Um, Twenty-four. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, "How long will you keep us in suspense?" If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> oh, well, wasn't it just a couple of chapters ago you picked up stones to kill him when he said before Abraham, I am? Um, <laughs> they, 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 um, yeah. Um, well, go on. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe me because you are not among my sheep. Okay. So he, Jesus is pretty blunt. Uh, yeah. Well, after so long, so many times, you know. Yes, I have told you. It, you know, he doesn't remind them. Remember a couple of months ago when you picked up stones, you were going to stone me to death because you know, <laughs> when I said that. Um, not only that, not only what the words I have said, but also the things I have done. You've heard about the miracles, the healings, the feedings of the 5,000. You've heard about these things. Um, these things I do not in the name of devils or Satans, not for my own, uh, not for my popularity, honor, power, glory, um, but in my Father's name. Uh, but... Uh, you do not believe because you do not I'm not part of my flock, just as much as people today who do not who hear about these things and do not believe. Well, they're not part of the flock. Um, okay, tw twenty-seven. We'll go read the rest of it then. We'll go uh, one at a time around. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. I give them eternal life, and they will never. Perish. 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 And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And How many times do I have to tell you? Yeah. We stop <laughs> there, but the next thing they do, they pick up stones again to stone him. <laughs> they told them, you know, Again, exactly what they asked him to tell him, and they picked up stones to stone him. Um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, but it's for blasphemy, for saying he is who he is. Right. We, they have a, well, why, what does that mean? How can, how can they be angry at him for blasphemy when, what, when they asked him if he was the Christ? Well, they have a slightly different idea of what the Christ yeah. is. Not equal, not a son of God the Father, but a human being who is, ew, a very special human being, but not the son of God the Father. So you are a crazy man and a heretic. As, um, and um, several theologians over the years, like C.S. Lewis, have stuck, come to the same conclusion. C.S. Lewis did not believe in Jesus, and he started studying him, and he said either well, everything that Jesus said is true, or he's a crazy man, you know, that we should, you know, completely ignore, you know, and, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but if he rose from the dead, you know, which all the evidence points to, then everything else he said is true. So, um, yeah, to say that I and the Father, I and God, the Father are one and the same. Either, that's what you hear people say at, at the hospital, right? In the special part of the hospital, Eastern State or Western State. 
Um, that's what they called it, right? What was that? Oh, yeah. He's, you it's lost the state me. hospital. Yeah, what about it? That's where they put people who say that they're oh. God or oh, Jesus oh. Christ or Napoleon. Okay, I didn't. We, we missed something. I missed something. Yeah. I, Medic, medical Lake. <laughs> medical Lake <laughs> Hospital. Uh, could you answer me a question? In verse 28 in the, in the uh, deal down below, there it says HUS mm -hmm. semicolon. What does that stand for? H-U-S. I'm thinking Hus, with, but, uh, but uh, let me go back to... abbreviations uh, here. Church Fathers. John Hus. Yeah. Okay. John Hus was a man from Bohemia, Czech area, region, you know, um, and uh, about a hundred years before Martin Luther, who accused this church of many of the same heresies that Martin Luther did. And John Hus was, uh, was burned at the stake for being a heretic. Oh. Um, so at first, uh, Luther did not want to associate himself with Huss, of course, because Huss had, was a heretic who had been burned at the stake. So, so nobody looked into what he had said. And when they, when John Eck in the in the um, debates with Luther started saying, "Well, you're teaching the same thing as John Huss did," trying to say that you're also a heretic, and Luther at first was saying, "No, no, no," but then he's. But then he looked into it, he's like, oh, well, if that's what Huss said, then he was right. <laughs> so, in some so people... don't burn me. <laughs> yeah, so the Catholics at that point said, well, Luther just lost the debate because he agreed that he was a heretic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but wait, let's look at the Bible and see, see maybe, maybe you were wrong, maybe Huss wasn't a heretic, or at least not in these things. Um, but, um, so... He had said this note, because Christ and his, fa his Father are one with the Holy Spirit, who is Christ's gift, by whom the church is knit together with him, therefore no one is able to pluck his sheep out of his hand from the church, his book, the church. But uh, no one is able to pluck them out of his hand. But well, that's something to talk about for a minute, huh? Because Jesus repeats this a couple of times. No one is able to snatch them out of my hand. My father is even greater than me, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So he would have been... They didn't believe him once again. Right. For, for sure. saying this stuff. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. They didn't believe him again, and just... Decided to. Uh, no one will snatch them. Yeah, and then he Jesus leaves after this at the end of the chapter, and then he comes back in a few months. You know, as they get closer to the Passover for La just for Lazarus, yeah. and the disciples are even saying, "We can't go back to Judea." Remember, yeah. You know, every time we get there, they try harder and harder to arrest you and have you killed. Yeah. But so, when you stop to think of it, wouldn't it be hard to realize that? A person, a human, Jesus, which was this bull. But to them, he was a human, and he, his father was God. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty darn hard to, to realize the truth of that. Yeah, I, I was saying that... To swallow was it here? The Only the, yeah. because of the Holy Spirit. Give, faith is a gift from God. The Holy yes. Spirit is a gift from God. It's not... Something we decide or give it, you know. Uh, so it's, um, but so once it's been given, no one can snatch them out of the hand. Explain the rest of that uh, predestination deal there, will you? Predestination. This is a note again from this in the study Bible, um, or God's eternal election covers only the godly, beloved children of God. 
It is a cause of their salvation, which he also provides. So God provides salvation. God gives faith. Uh, he plans what belongs to it as well. Our salvation is found so firmly on it that the gates of hell cannot overcome it. That's from the formula of Concord. Nothing can, even the gates of hell cannot overcome it. Um, predestination is one of the things that churches debate quite a bit. Uh, so you have the Calvinists on one side who will say, everything is predestined by God. You know, all who are saved, and he has also predestined or chosen all those who will be damned. God decides, you know, and, and it's already decided, you know, and you don't, um, we have, on the other hand, we have what we, what we call the Arminian churches or decision churches who say, who, who take, you know, ignore predestination at all, at, at, in everything and say, um, it's your choice. It's a human choice whether to believe. And they turn faith into a human work rather than a gift of God. We, the Lutherans and um, maybe a couple, a few other churches kind of stand in the middle. And when it, it says, when the Bible talks about predestination, it's focused on God choosing those who, who are saved. Now God also tells us that He wants all to be saved. He wants all to be saved. Uh, he offers the gift of faith to all people, but many people, many people don't want to believe, don't listen to the voice. You, um, and you know, I know this starts to get kind of, kind of get a bit complicated, but we need to speak to the way the Bible speaks, not make it fit with the way we understand. Um, so no one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. When, when we have faith and we, keep, and we keep our faith in God, nothing can take us away. Even demons or Satan or, you know, can take us away. If we tell God, hey God, I'm done. I'm going to go wander around on my own for a while. You know, like your children, sometimes you say, oh, it's not a good idea, but okay. <laughs> good luck. I hope you get home safe. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so they don't have to leave the house. Well, some children, they, at some point, they do have to leave the house. But uh, <laughs> um, it's, important. it's best anyway. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for all parties. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but God al allows people to reject His gift. The, 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 so on the one hand, you you got you you got the Calvinists who say God even chooses those who are going to hell. Well, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. God wants everyone to be saved. Well, you got, on the other hand, you got people who, rather than focusing on God, giving us the gift of faith in the Holy Spirit, they turn it into a, we go out and get it. It's like we're stealing faith from God or something. You know, <laughs> uh, you, you, the parable of the lost sheep. Is the lost sheep looking for, for the shepherd? Or is the shepherd looking for the lost sheep? <laughs> it, wh what happened to Adam and Eve when they fell into sin? Did they go looking for God? Or were they hiding in the bushes? Hiding. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, you know, a sinful man is always <coughs> hiding, running away from God. And it is God who finds the man, you know, like, a, like a hurt, lost puppy, and says, you know, lo gives it love, and then the puppy trusts you, and then it comes with you, right? You know, so, um, so predestination is the promise from God that that he will he will nothing can snatch you out of his hand. He will let you walk away if you choose to. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you had the sermon on that a few weeks ago, it really was comforting to me because I've always been a Christian from the time I was little. I was baptized and. Mm -hmm. Well, the Holy Spirit was working with me all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, not God lets God's not going to go to the churches who make it into you know, a huge decision and say, no, 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 you're all wrong. You can't come in. You, okay, you know, like you know, sometimes you let your kids choose, especially little. 
toddlers, let them choose. You don't want, you know, for dinner, what do you want? Macaroni and cheese or you want hot dogs, you know? <laughs> you, don't, you don't let them choose anything. You give them two things that you already have ready to go. <laughs> but well, That's uh, a very good secret in that even if, if, even if it's pretty well done, you give them a choice. But you get, just don't say, go eat your carrots. You say, uh, well, what do you want to eat first, your carrots or your potatoes or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. that's, and that's the teacher and you come That's out. That's what I did in school. Yeah. It wasn't that they had to do it. Okay, what, do you, what, what would you like to start with first? Okay, we'll do that first. Okay, then we'll then we'll go out. Yeah. yeah, until we're until we've fully submitted ourselves to God, we'd still like to think that we're you know, involved in the choice and doing something. Yes, and that's the same way. It's just yeah, um, yeah. That's a good a good maybe a little clearer way than yeah. than some of the other theological babbling I do. But uh, so okay, um, so this is talking about. This cannot snatch them out. We, you, we would put That's, that in the theology of predestination. The, snatch, the, sna the word snatch in there just really kind of gets to you. Mm -hmm. Snatch. And yet the devil is always trying to... He snatch us snatch away, us yes. Out. Yeah. Uh, he, can't, he can't snatch you away. He can entice you, trick you yeah. Yeah, into he temptation. Tries. Yeah. So, turn back to God. God, is this the right thing to do? Yeah, so. Um, shepherd, sheep, anything else for the, in, in the sheep? We like the shepherd and the sheep stories, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they make sense. Mm-hmm. And at that time, sheep were the thing to, to use for a medium to use to... Mm -hmm. You're right. Today, um, today when this is so come a most sheep, a people, sheep? yeah, most people don't, even in our town, don't really know much about sheep, sheep or no, shepherds. No, we don't. Or, yeah. And as many animals as we had on the farm, we never had sheep. Yeah. And there are, sheep are a little different. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, we, we were in Tanya, somebody gave us a book. From Copenhagen to Okanagan. Oh, I have that book because my best, one of my best friends, that was her grandfather. Oh, you did? You, she, I still have the book. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little book. Um, a man who was actually a Lutheran yes. pastor's yes. son, like 10th or something, 12th, 13th in line. <laughs> uh, and did an apprenticeship in Denmark to be a farmer and then left to, for the land of opportunity, uh, was in Illinois for a short time, and then came out west and did a little bit of mining and digging and tunneling and railroad work and ended up uh, homesteading uh, over by Brewster, one of the first homesteaders over by Brewster. And, uh, if anyone wants to read it, I have the book. Yeah, it's a fun little story. He does a good job. Uh, uh, tell you uh, of the story, sharing and some it, of that. And it isn't written like a, a accomplished writer would write. It's written more in just listening, you know. Telling the story. Telling yeah. The story. My, my father would have training in Denmark yeah. as a boy, as a, a blacksmith, and then he came to America. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this man came your back dad? and forth. Oh. Well, he might have. Your dad might have run into this guy because he went back and forth to Spokane several times, getting. Animals or go eat supplies. He was, older. And he was old. He would have been a little bit older. A little he older. Yes. Yeah. Seventy nine. So. Yeah. Eighteen seventy nine. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Ulrich, he came was out here in in eighteen uh, nineties. Yeah. Uh, was when he was settling also, my dad out in, this. Been in America. Yeah. But, yeah. But he did that training. You know. I yeah. Think he, what did you call it? I hard with words. Uh, apprenticeship. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. But well, with sheep though, he grew. He mo almost everybody in the area was growing cattle in the Okanagan Valley, and one guy brought in sheep. He talked about the sh Curtis sheep slaughter. There's a sign over there south of Okanagan, and, and where they all, they the sheep grazed the ground down to the yeah. pulled them right out of the roots, and the cattlemen said, "Nah, -uh, not in our neighborhood." In the first year, they told the guy, "Don't bring them sheep back here." And he brought sheep back, and they went out and shot them all. 
Um, so uh, it was a different kind of justice than there is now. Yeah. It's instant justice, you call that. Right. There's, yeah. This today justice well, is years. slow. Yeah. Today justice is too slow. Um, yeah, it was a hard time. It was hard to imagine that was just over a hundred, hundred and twenty years ago. They were. I mean, there was no roads, no. From I don't remember a thing about it. No, but from Almira. <laughs> but you're not from over there. No. What's that? You, you didn't spend time over in the Okanagan. No, I grew up. That was, I grew up in Panorama Country, up yeah. in Chihuila. Yeah, yeah, that was really, really an important story over there about the sheep slaughter. Yeah. And the, in the winter time, when there was good snow, that's where people would take their kids to go sled because it was a nice slope for them to sled on. Yeah. In the Okanagan, the, the railroad came out through Elmira and maybe to Waterville and then, and then Wenatchee. So there's a, it's, it's rough country, you know, when you get north of Wenatchee and, and Elmira, you know, into this area, this coulee area, you know, it's hard, not easy to settle. But, uh, um, but it's, anyways, that sheep, that was, a, um, Sheep are different. Um, if they know the shepherd, they will follow him. And, and uh, the shepherd can lead them with his voice uh, where he goes. So, yeah, we, that's our, as we pray. We pray that we would hear the shepherd's voice and know him. And not like, not like the Jews uh, and the, 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 Hippo, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in Jesus' day who, who said, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. They they rejected their Messiah. Um. Okay, Acts twenty, Acts chapter twenty, and I have to admit this story isn't jumping out at me as one of my most well-known favorite stories in Acts of all the stories of Acts here, but. Uh, I see in the middle of it does mention flock, so maybe that's part, part of why it uh, they chose this this one if, for this week. Oh, I got different. Oh, oh. oh. we're about the next that's twenty. Seventeen at thirty-five. Yeah, this is the bigger reading this week, <laughs> and we got some strange words. Now from Miletus, Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here. You guys come over. Um, I, is there a note here? How far is this? See the map. Uh, it says see the map. 1886. I... Um, we don't have maps in these. Mine places. has a map. Um, I don't think these do. Yeah. Jerusalem. Okay, here we go. Ephesus and Miletus. Um, what page are yours? Mine on oh, 1886, a couple pages back. There's a little ways. It's not just. Is this not just Grand Coulee and Coulee Dam, two <laughs> miles apart? These are. These are 20 miles or so. These are a little ways, um, but um, Paul was, um, he got kicked out of Ephesus. Why is he? Anyways, he's, he's, uh, he wants them to come to him this time. He, Paul traveled a lot. We can, he, can, he can ask the people to come to him once in a while. So, um, okay. He did it all by foot. That's yeah, well, I, don't, I don't know. He may have had a, a little boat, you know, from or a time mule to, to ride on. Or... He didn't mention mules, um, but it could have been. You don't always mention the you if you got a ride. Maybe would you get a ride on a cart once in a while, a hitchhike? Uh, but yeah, a lot of foot travel. Um, okay, eighteen. And when they came to him, he said to them, "You yourself." Know how long I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia. Mm -hmm. So he's in Asia, huh? Right, the Asia, 
is in that in that time Asia referred to basic what we call Turkey now the country of Turkey. I don't know exactly where the limits were, they, uh, but we think of Asia as well. Basically, even Israel is in the continent of Asia, right? It splits by Suez, and it goes all the way out to Japan and such. Um, they, they, when they meant Asia there, they're just referring to the area of Turkey, the region of okay. Turkey. Okay, so you know how I lived um, every day, right? I didn't, I didn't have to take a day off and, you know, not today, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> uh, um, we would, when I we went to D Disneyland and they got the characters out there in their, in their costumes. And there's, they, especially on hot days, they're limited in time, you know, how long they're out there. And when time's up, they, they're heading for the door. <laughs> get that costume off, cool off, get, take their break. Uh, Paul didn't take a break. He, he didn't have a costume. He didn't have his pastor suit the costume. Then he didn't take it off. It's my day off. I get to be grumpy today. Um, 19. Serving the Lord with all... It isn't my turn, is it? No, it's great. Serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Through even the rough times. Uh, 20. 20, Linda. 20. I don't know where we are. And we're uh, in Acts chapter Acts. 20, 20, verse 20. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Now I did not shrink from declaring... To to you anything that you profitable, that was profitable, and teaching you in public and from house to house. Mm -hmm. um, building up this credibility, um, publicly and privately, house to house. Same said the same things out in public and and in your houses. Taught to the same stuff. Twenty one. Testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and the faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he was preaching to both. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing, knowing what will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. Mm -hmm. oh. That's not good. Uh, no, but it's exactly what happened. Uh, he uh, he was arrested there, not immediately, but uh, when he got there, you know, um, he ended up for, for pretty quickly, shortly it after says, that. The Holy Spirit testifies to me in, mm -hmm. in every city, imprisonment and afflictions. Not very how, Lutheran, but uh, yeah. How 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 um, how did the Holy Spirit testifies what I was. Um, well, uh, through his prayers and his dreams, and maybe uh, scripture verses that kept coming to mind. Um, there was also a man, Ananias. <laughs> Ananias. Uh, he was a busy little guy, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it was a common name. That was what we read last week. It was a common yeah. name. There was a man who came up to Paul. And took his belt and tied it around Paul and said, "This is gonna. This man, the Holy Spirit tells me this man is going to be abound and tied up when he goes to Jerusalem." So, uh, I know it's not it's not very Lutheran. We don't we're not quite comfortable with this Holy Spirit speaking stuff. This is Pentecostals, and oftentimes they go off and on the wrong direction. But uh, but this was this was okay. I s <laughs> the, yeah, and, uh, we know the Holy Spirit did speak to Paul in dreams. Don't preach here. Don't go. Don't go. Keep going to Macedonia. You know, he, he guided okay. him. So that's probably where, where it came from then. Yeah. So if the word testifies to me had been changed to tells me or talks to me or speaks to me, it might make more sense. I like the word testifies. Man. Do you? Because I don't believe it. You hear him say, oh, God told me to do this. Well, Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know, I know. Would I, you believe him if they said God testified? I don't know, but I think... 
No, you know, I, I, I'm hard, but they, they, they'll say things, you know, like, like Linda told me something, well, God told me to do this, God told me to. Right, I had a friend who said, God told me to divorce my wife, and I'm like, what? No, God does not tell anybody to divorce their wife. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, no, I don't, I don't think you're hearing right. Um, right, testifies, uh, makes it a little more certain, like, you know, that this is a more, more serious word and not just, not just stories, you know. So, 24. But I do not account my life of any value nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Oh. I guess testify there is speak to. Well, yeah, speak yeah. to. Mm -hmm. um, but in a fairly serious way, isn't it? Boy, yeah. that's, this is really serious when it, yeah. We pretty much only use testify in the court. Of, the grace um, of God. Some churches use it a bit about telling what God has done in their life. Yeah, their testimonies. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, you mean like the faith healers and they have their... People. Right, that's what we usually think of, right, when we hear of people in church testifying. But uh, it's not bad to tell what God has done in our lives. Um, we just have to do it in a way that gives honor and focus to God. Yes. Instead, of, I think the evangelicals uh, turn that around more so. It's the, they have. Mm -hmm. They what? They they have become the one. Rather than mm -hmm. God, oh. yeah, that, right. or at least that's the feeling I get. It's the same same thing with the, the the decision to follow Jesus turns the focus around from God calling me and giving me the Holy Spirit and faith to I to, I accepted it. Yeah, I gave my heart to Jesus. Oh, did you take it out? And um, so uh, so Paul is twenty. He's, but he's being a bit, he's being a bit fearless. Uh, I've done, I've done enough in my life. When he's said in other places, you know, for me, sure, it'd be better to be, go and be with the Lord, right? Then I'm free of all this. Sometimes, you know, I say that even, even on good days. Sure, <laughs> it'd be, it can, it's going to be better there than even the best day here. So I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord. Yeah. Like, oh. um, I'm, I'm 90 years old now, so I don't have to go to church. Well, yeah. We've heard that, haven't we? Yeah, we've heard that. Yeah. Seriously? Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Um, Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Who said that? Oh. Well, it's it does it's not important to say. It's right. not important to who did it, but it's something we all know. Something we know. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Paul, well, he had been, at the beginning, the call we heard last week said he would be testified before kings and, you know, and princes, and he's done some of that, but in this last, after his imprisonment, he does more testimony before kings and even yeah. Caesar than he did before. So, so, in, so in that sense, it is fulfilling what had been said at the beginning of his ministry. Well, I think of this one, it but, says he may finish his course well, he knows that, well, his imprisonment and death, yeah, come yeah. On, that, yeah, when I get to prison, I can do a lot much more. Well, he got to testify to Caesar. Yeah, well, as I say, whereas he was through at this point. Yeah. And then he was, yeah. Um, for Paul, now none of, I haven't heard a message from God that I got to go witness to the president or the Supreme Court or anything. So yeah. I, I think my job is here. Good. Um, all right. We'll keep you to that promise. Okay, for now. <laughs> for now. Uh, 25, Linda. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. Okay. That's, that's, that's serious words, right? If your friend says, I'm not going to see you again, this is the last goodbye, you know, uh, you, you're like, what? Don't say that, right? <laughs> you don't know that. You could, you could come back here. Uh, 
these are serious words. Um, I am innocent of the blood of all of you. I've done everything that I could do or should do, right? You know, I fulfilled my pre my job. There's testify again. Mm-hmm. It's used a lot in this paragraph. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Another yeah, a couple, a couple more, yeah. Okay, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock of, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. Okay, so that makes our connection a bit to the flock, the sheep. Christ is the good shepherd. And then there, uh, then there are some there are a couple of layers of, of supervision, overseers. But um, so he's speaking to elders. So these would be these would be uh, not like our board of elders, but pastors, people who've been had laid hands on, um, and, and uh, but b below the apostles, you know, the, the elders, it would be the Past, ordained pre pastors or priests in the church is what he's referring to and um, they are overseers of the flock now pastor where, what's the difference between disciples and apostles oh, the disciple means follower doesn't it? student particularly student follower yeah apostle means one who is sent so they were the twelve were they the apostles and the except for Judas. Yeah. They were the disciples while they were learning. Oh. And then at the end uh, Jesus sent them out into the world. I'll see if I can remember that. <laughs> um so we often use the words interchangeably, mm -hmm. but uh apostles more re refers and Paul was an apostle. He was sent directly by Jesus. Not not at the ascension with the rest of the apostles, but he had a special calling, right? That we read about last week. Uh, oh, so, um, Don't, doesn't the Mormon Church have their in their hierarchy the twelve apostles also? Yes, they they invented, recreated, uh, yeah, a council. They have a council of twelve. They have the, the head bishop and prophet president and prophet they have the council of 70 they have different layers of hierarchy and yeah church which as churches even as a church that's not christian but who tries to be christian they're using christian terms you know to uh try to stay somewhat faithful to the bible yeah so it i mean they were all christians in new york before joseph smith came up with, you know, made up these stories, <laughs> so. Um, pastor, but the word pastor means shepherd also. Yeah. So, um, all right, Holy Spirit made you overseers, 29. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them yeah so continuing oh, the they're gonna really work on them the now. shepherd theme yeah the wolves wolves mean what, what is he talking about false teachers people come up with uh, all sorts of heresies and wrong wrong teaching especially we would consider the mormons as one of those mm -hmm. today who've Go, going out all around the world and lured Christians away, you know, saying that they are a Christian church with a with a fuller gospel, or what? How do they say it? Well, a number Expanded, of years ago, isn't it? or something. A number of years ago, here there came the rumor that the they were coming into this area, you know, and that's when they built that big church down there, and they were really going to convert this area. But I haven't heard. But they have the church. They well, still I mean, there. that they have got people from this area into their church. I'm sure they did some, yes. Yeah. But I know they made a concerted effort and, and 
going to the houses and talking to people. Yeah, they, they, they still do. Um, yeah, they, they still, still do that. I know, but at that time, it was kind of scary to me. Wasn't that was one of the contractors was Mormon? Um, I don't re I don't really know. Started a bee, one of the contractors well, that came in here. Um, yes, people who've come to work from other areas yeah. were Mormon. It's probably more successful having people come into the area who are Mormon than converting many many of the local people. And but they are very active, going door to door. Uh, working on their uh, salvation. Don't, I don't see them have them near as much as we well, especially them. the last two years with the pandemic, they aren't right. going door to door unless people somebody invites them to I, come. I think it, to this day they're probably, uh, if not the largest congregation in the area, certainly close to it. Oh, I'm sure that they have a large congregation. Okay. Yeah, My and and they're actually building a temple down in Moses Lake so they can go and do the proper ceremonies locally, not, don't have to go all the way to Spokane, Spokane or, Moses, or Salt Lake City or wherever, yeah, someplace else. So there's enough of them, in close enough, that they're building a temple in Moses Lake. Oh, really? Yeah. When we lived in southern Idaho, Oh, there was oh a boy! Of, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, just an example. One example of wolves. Now they didn't come until quite a bit later from Paul compared to Paul, but there have been there have been heresies all along the line. Wolves who uh, who attack and twist and draw away disciples after them. Thirty one. Therefore, be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to ab admonish. admonish every one with tears. And mm -hmm. now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Yeah, well, it's, he, <laughs> it's not his. It's, it's God's church. Yeah. So he's done all he can do. In three years, this is the longest he's spent in one area, not just in one town, but it, you know, close to uh, around Ephesus. Um, he, he's done all he can do. Now it's time for me to leave. You're in God's hands. And um, is, <laughs> as tempting as it is to think that you're in trouble without me, but you know, <laughs> no, uh, no, God's hands are the best hands. So um, I have to turn it over to God, and, and it's your choice. Yeah, I have to move on. So watch out. Um, there, I've got more to do. I, yeah, he's got to, He's got to go. Um, inheritance. Those who are being sanctified, um, made holy. There, all right, going on. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. His own hands. He, well, we know Paul often was working tents or other things while he was also preaching. I'm glad I don't have to because uh, it'd be a lot of extra is it, <laughs> work. And uh, so, 35. In all things, I have shown you that my work by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Okay. So this is the same Paul that was Saul before he got converted. Mm-hmm. And he's been on his journey ministry for three years mm -hmm. in Ephesus he's been doing other ministry for longer than that okay but so he's not going to be like Jesus conversion. he's not going to be like Jesus and be crucified now that he's had three years there no I mean he's going back to Jerusalem to be crucified and then he'll be arrested and he'll be tried in Jerusalem and then Caesarea and then he'll be taken to Rome and they'll have the shipwreck on the way to Rome, and then he'll eventually get to Rome, and he'll be on trial there. Um, that, then the book ends there. 
We know that eventually he is beheaded in Rome because Roman citizens, unless they committed murder or something horrible, were not crucified. They, they had the right to be beheaded in a, in a night, you know, quicker, more painless death. Um, but there's a lot of stories that he may have been freed from Rome at first, and he said he had hoped to keep going on out to Spain. Um, uh, and there's places in Spain that claim that St. Paul were there. Uh, and then, and then he was arrested. Then he might have been arrested again, back into Rome and beheaded in Rome. But um, that's why the big cathedral at the Vatican is the Cathedral of Saint Peter, or is it Peter and Paul? No, it's Saint Peter's. Saint, Saint Peter's. Peter's. Well, Saint Peter's Basilica. Yeah. Um, but they that both Peter and Paul were both martyred there. Yeah. Pretty, pretty uh, confident of that. Um, anyways, I think the reason we have this reading today is that it, it talks about being uh, taking care of the flock and being overseers, uh, the under shepherds. You know, and as we continue doing today, while we still call our pa our leaders pastors uh, and not priests, uh, you have one, a lot of responsibility on you. Right? Yeah. What's the difference between a pastor and a priest? A priest um, is one who uh, oversees a sacrifice. A what? A sacrifice. Well, when I think of priests, I always think of Catholics. Catholics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, are, but in are there priests in other? European, Western culture. Um, sometimes I think, I think Anglicans might use the term priest or priestess. Um, yeah. And other pagans... Who have Episcopals use the word priest also. Right. Um, Episcopals are, some of them are really close to Catholic. Some of them drift more towards Lutheran or Presbyterian. Yeah. But uh, priests oversee a sacrifice. And particularly the sacrifice in the... sacrifice of the Mass. In the every day. Catholic Church. Oh, not somebody being no. well, sacrificed. See, they believe that uh, they are doing the sacrifices, isn't that correct? Not, Re God, not God. They're reenacting the sacrifice. Every time they the do communion, yeah. okay. they, they are re-sacrificing Jesus. Every day, every place, they do it. Yeah. Um, so It's a very solemn moment in the Mass when the priest is doing that. When you yeah. were altar boy, did you do it in Latin? What's that? When you were altar boy, did you have to learn it all in Latin? Learned the whole mass. Did you? Memorized it. A damn qui lady got you into the mail. So you speak a foreign language. <laughs> Ancient Latin, very, yeah. You know, we, we went from, uh, Linda and I decided to take a, a ride yesterday about 11.30 in the morning and, and, and we went up to Spokane, had lunch, and I drove on up to Chewila, which is where I grew up, and came back home through Valley and Springdale and then down through Ford to Reardon. Mm -hmm. I told Linda, I said, I served Mass at the Catholic Church there in Springdale when I was a boy. Oh, in Springdale know. too, okay. Wow. That, the one in That's right where the church was when I served Mass. <laughs> Chewila has the shiny copper roof, yep. but uh, yeah. Um, now we, as Lutherans, teach that communion is distributing the Jesus, the once for all sacrifice that he did, which we think more closely follows the, what the Bible says. He was sacrificed once for all. You know, we are continuing to receive his body and blood, but we are not sacrificing him again. Uh, on the you know when we do communion, um, so so that that's partly why we there may be some Lutherans who call the call them priests administering the sacrament, but um, it's right it's not as common with us. Um, okay. So read through Revelation briefly. 
Revelation 7, in our quick tour of Revelation and during the Easter season. A great multitude. Seven, nine. One too many. Thirteen, fifteen. Okay. I'm just one page off. Oh, here's our list from Jacob's children. Every tribe, yeah, twelve thousand, and uh, these are these numbers are were symbolic. We're, we're going to start after that on verse nine. But that's uh, what I was going to say. They wouldn't all be exactly the same. How come? Um, twelve. That must have to see significant some way. Right. I can't remember what the twelve and the ten and the three and the seven. I can't remember, but twelve. Yeah, um, that's so make a difference. Uh, was a symbolic biblical number, 12 tribes, 12 disciples, 12 apostles, and a thousand means to the, well, for, for most of them at that time, that was as much as they could imagine. It, they didn't have millions and billions. And something that the Jehovah's uh, stand on is the 144,000. Right. Yeah. They, they, right. They, in, they take uh, a symbolic number of meaning all the people of God from all over the earth and say only 144,000 people get into the highest heaven. Yeah. Well, then once they, once they had more than 144,000 members, then they had to have a new revelation from God. They had to make room for the rest of them somewhere. <laughs> So, Maybe they just shoved the beginning ones out. So they said that there's 144,000, the highest heaven, but there's another lower heaven for the good people who... This is where Mormonism comes in. In my house, there are many rooms. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but, okay, great multitude that no one could number. We, you know, even here, right here, it says... Not 144,000, but a great multitude that no one could number from every tribe and every nation of the earth, all the languages and peoples. So, okay, that's, that's a long verse. Um, Stand before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, which is one of the reasons we use white robes you know, at church and for pastors. And, and, and we don't... We don't force it, but some churches have their acolytes or their communion assistants, everybody who is assisting in the service in a white robe. I wore, as a uh, altar boy, a black cassock with a white, uh, what is it, amos, is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Uh, right, a cassock and, um, yeah, I can't I remember the word. An amos. But, but mm -hmm. yeah. Was your robe at Easter the same one you wear every day, every Sunday? Or was it, because it seemed like it was wider. A little wider? I did wash it. <laughs> We're trying to clean it. <laughs> it just, it, maybe it was just me. I, no, I have two. I, uh, I, one that I wear during Lent and Advent that's flax, a little browner. And then I, at Easter and Christmas, oh, I bring out wider the whiter one. one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you trapped it, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed something that was different. I, uh, I don't, you know, I, 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 and then I, ju I just have the two, so, but okay. I, so I'm glad somebody noticed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not. Didn't so that Easter looks a little bit brighter. brighter. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, to verse ten. Uh, I can't remember who, where we left off. Okay, I'll start. And crying out with a loud voice, "Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb." Verse eleven. Verse eleven. Hmm. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God. Saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from, a, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. 
And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of, just a minute, I gotta get the right mm -hmm. there's, there's two of them stuck together here. Mine did too. Yeah, great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, I they, like that contrast, white in the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. Mm -hmm. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yeah, now that get, it does get, get repeated again in, Re, in the book, in this in Revelation, but yeah, the lamb in the midst of them shall be the shepherd, their shepherd. Um, and we and we re referred to the lamb, the lamb shows up over and over again, also in Revelation, but... Uh, but this time the lamb is not the follower, the lamb is... is the shepherd. Jesus, Jesus right. Jesus is not Yeah, yeah. the lamb is Jesus. But, and some churches actually have, like at the seminary, on the altar or the pulpit, has actual a lamb with a, with a wound, that, like it's been slain, uh, and then holding a um, scepter or something. Um, yes, strange dream John had, or vision. Uh, but uh, a lamb, standing like a lamb. But uh, we're looking forward to this. We will be sheltered in his presence, right? It, around the throne with all these others. Uh, John, uh, who are these people? Well, he doesn't just say, I don't know. Well, sir, you know. Go ahead, you tell me. Um, okay, these are the... These are the believers who come through the great tribulation. And, and we believe the great tribulation is now in between the time when Jesus ascended into heaven. We're in great trouble in the world until he returns. Uh, not as some other churches teach that there will be a rapture and then a tribulation or a tribulation and then a rapture, that we're in the tribulation now. We're, tribulation means time of trouble. But well, it doesn't even mention rapture in the Bible, does it? Um, it's a, Jesus said some will be caught up into, the, they will be caught up into the sky. So they, it, it talk, does talk about being caught up, but that's what rapture means, caught up. But, uh, um, but, we think they're that it's, we think it's all referring to the same time <laughs> when Jesus comes. That's the end. That's the rapture. We're caught up. This earth burns up, and then a new one appears, and we all you know, are resurrect, you all know, put together back on it, you know, and move forward. Not not um, not as some of the books and movies and other things try to make a story out of it. But you know, there was that series of books left behind. Mm -hmm. I read one of them, I think. What well, was it? Yeah. Somebody said, Oh, it's just from all from Revelations and it's all there. Did you ever read that left behind? Right. And then they and they wonder why we don't want to go to their Bible studies and <laughs> yeah, I have read them. Like, no, I'm not gonna read that. So. <laughs> I did read them. I did read them. I read one or two of the books. Some things you just have to accept on faith and not get too involved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's correct. Or you can become confused. There, it's all based on the Bible, but it's a different interpretation. Yeah. yeah. I think so. why God's kept me this long is I'm understanding more. Yeah. Really. Yeah. That must be my purpose because why else would I live so long? It's that prevention you've been taking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm having a topic tomorrow for, El well, I call it Elder Mimel, but whatever it is. And it's on love, and I thought it would be simple. Huh? My mind is still going around. I've been working three days, and I've been, oh, how many hours? 
and I'm still not sure how it's going to be presented. <laughs> I'm going to go to the here someplace and buy cookies. I'm going to cook cookies. There's some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here's a prayer uh, from the study Bible for this good shepherd. My dear shepherd, watch over me that I may never stray from you. Uh, Lord God, be with all of us, uh, especially those in need of your prayers, your comfort, your strength. Uh, watch over them and um, g give them especially peace that you have all things in control and nothing can snatch us out of your hands. Pray all these things in Jesus' name as he taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.